fun times. Hanging out in Les Stoud. That's French. <laughs> For the Stoud. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Heaven. I'm Tracy. And this is another round with Heaven and Tracy. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing this show? Today we're going to get my life together. Mm-hmm. Um, what mean? <laughs> in what way specifically? <laughs> we are going to solve my dating dilemma. Maybe. Okay. It's a long story. Okay. We'll talk about that later. We are going to answer some listener mail, several at one time. Yeah. And uh, yes. Because a lot of people are asking the same question. So yeah. we just want to help the entire world. <laughs> All at once. Yes. Um, and we're also going to chit chat with the one and only Jay Smooth later. Talking about fun Video racism. blogger extraordinaire. Racism things. Yes. Um, and also maybe a joke because racism is heavy. <laughs> also, yeah. whenever we don't tell a joke, people get hostile. Uh, very upset. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't know what to do with that. So... Um, we got a joke for y'all. Yes. We love you. I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's start with the listener questions. Okay. So we get a lot of <sighs> great emails. <laughs> it's too early to get stressed out. Don't I know. Stress I'm yet. sighing too much already. <laughs> we get a lot of really, really great emails from listeners. We love each and every one of you. We have a pretty sizable white listenership they've all been asking a category of questions that i like to call white people's existential crises wow <laughs> crises <laughs> well, i was gonna call them white ally questions what but... yeah okay white <laughs> ally questions but it's basically like a white person having an existential crisis sort of so i just searched for the word ally in my email inbox <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. I'm looking at three white, blah, white now. <laughs> we are I'm drinking white wine right today now. for this white wine. <laughs> that is genius. Uh, it's like a top three most heaven genius thing you've <laughs> ever you, said. You're you. welcome. You're so, welcome. So we do honestly want to answer these questions, but yeah. we just want to do it all at once so we don't have to keep answering this question. We should um, read a little bit from one of the emails. The subject line of this email is white ally with a question mark and it says da, 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 my main reason for writing though is to ask if you could take a bit of time in an episode to cover what the best things to do are if i want to be a white ally do you even like the term white ally should it be a thing this is basically the heart of all of the types of it questions is. like this we've been it getting. is so we thought it would be a good idea to just chit chat yeah a little bit about the term ally so how do you feel about it tracy i'm very wary yeah of people who introduce themselves as allies. Yes. Doesn't matter what <laughs> kind of ally you're yeah. trying to be. A white ally, an LGBT ally, a left-handed ally. Okay. <laughs> if you're right-handed. You know, I'm just, I'm yeah, just yeah. always I mean, very... ally is an action, not an identity. Yes. So, like, the it's fact that, that you're so worried about the identity versus the things you are doing. Right. And, I mean, I, I honestly believe that plenty of people who seek to be allies aren't just doing so for the title, but... It just still makes me, like, nervous. And I mean, wary. that's the anxiety of all the emails we get. Right. It's the worry about the title, like, about ally or I the identity. I don't get that from the emails. Really? Mm -mm. I don't get anxiety over the title. I get Ernest wanting to help out. I feel like a lot of people, and I'm definitely generalizing here, mm. but I mean, like, the very candid way that we talk and hang out yeah. is something that I'm sure a lot of white people are not privy to. Yeah. I remember when I was in school, me and my black girlfriends would just sit, and, sit in a circle in, like, the lobby and talk. And people would just like stop and sit and like look at us talk and listen to us talk, <laughs> which <laughs> made us feel weird. But yeah. I mean, like it just drove home like how easy it is to segregate yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's easy for white folks to not be around black folks. I mean, like, there's a lot not... of data about white people don't actually have a black friend. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> We're looking at you, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Shots. Oh blah, man! Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but anyway, I feel like that's where this is coming from because a lot of white people that write us are like, "Oh my yeah, gosh, totally." You know, I've I've just never experienced like some of the stuff that you talk about. I didn't know that it really happened. Blah blah blah. But I don't get anxiety over the term ally, and I feel like they sh there should be more anxiety for white folks over the term ally. I think in general, I get anxiety about 
how to perform or how to be in these spaces or in these conversations. Hmm. I think my main thing is people should feel anxious. Yeah. You should feel uncomfortable. <laughs> this world is deeply discomforting. Mm-hmm. Welcome to my life. Right, right, right. <laughs> like once you are woke, you will be uncomfortable forever. Right. <laughs> it's a bill that you can't So I just think unring. a lot of the questions get at like, I feel uncomfortable. I'm not sure what to do. It's like that is healthy. That's what mm-hmm. you should feel. You yeah. should not feel comfortable doing this. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So how can a white person be a good quote unquote ally? Sit with your discomfort. Mm-hmm. Go to Google.com and find some books <laughs> and a- articles and read. <laughs> Google is your friend. (laughs) Google.com. I love that you spelled out the whole address. (laughs) This is a thing. Also, I feel like when you talk about race or do work around race, people don't see it as work, Mm -hmm. especially if you're a person of color. They just assume you just have the knowledge. Right. I read a lot of books to get to this point. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You should also do that. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, it's very important to me that folks who are seeking to be any kind of ally are prepared to play a side role. Like, this is not your movie. You're not the lead character. Yeah. You know? You should learn how to be a bystander in whatever situation. Absolutely. And I feel like a lot of um, a lot of privileged people see it as a good deed to, like, vocalize on another group's problems and thoughts and theories and ideas. But it's not your voice that anyone should be hearing. You, as a white person, have more access to everything. You know, yeah. like, don't seek to be the voice of the voiceless. Seek to give a microphone to the voiceless. You know, help me amplify my And ask voice. yourself, why are they silent right now? Maybe exactly. someone is silencing them. Exactly. And <laughs> like, another people thing, always phrase it as if, like, you're just giving them the microphone and they're going to talk. Right. Well, it's like they don't have a microphone for a reason. Exactly. Exactly. And it's also very, very important, I think, for white folks and any, like, privileged person to make your main goal and your main project waking up other members of your privilege group. <laughs> yes. White folk. <laughs> educate yes. your people collect your people Get your folks <laughs> you know? they're not gonna listen to me exactly. they're gonna listen to you like whenever we're talking about like street harassment yeah for example like we can't end that there's only so Men much i can say that. exactly yeah. like instead of like barking at me and wanting me to be nicer to you on the street go talk to the men who are making it really really hard for you to speak to women mm. on the street you know what i mean yeah work on changing the minds of people like you yeah so be uncomfortable read some books <laughs> And Go to Google.com, do website. work. Yeah. Do the work of being an ally instead of thinking about the identity. Also, and also don't do the work of an ally to be called an ally. Do it because you're a good person. Do it hopefully. because you genuinely, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Do it because you genuinely want to help people who need it, you know? Yeah. Okay. That's enough. I think so. <laughs> I think I never want to talk about it. Right. Also, again. <laughs> well, well, also, I would like to say that I want the term ally to go away. Yeah, please. Just be a good Dead person. That. Don't try to be an ally. Uh, and obviously another thing you can do is keep listening to our podcast because we're great obviously <laughs> what we've been really enjoying about the podcast it's like really intimate and conversational yeah and like we really appreciate that we get to have these kinds yeah. of conversations in a way we wouldn't have exactly. even writing or on our site mm-hmm. so we appreciate that you're listening and like this is like a conversational space for yeah. us keep doing that keep listening to brown people yeah keep that's listening all we to ask. black people listen <laughs> more than you speak Oof, absolutely yes if you have more questions, want more advice, want us to be mean to you. <laughs> or kidding. nice. If you want us to be Just nice. Kidding. We're so nice. I We're feel like so I'm the kind. nice one lately. <laughs> you are the nice one in general. Yeah. Don't get it twisted though. Yeah. I have on boots today. So. <laughs> you can email us at another round at BuzzFeed.com and yeah. <laughs> Okay. Are you ready? Let's talk about my sad life. My sad life. It's okay, so, so sad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a few weeks ago we talked about this uh, dating thing we're gonna do. Yes. While the amazing Jean Grey was here singing back up. Singing Negro spirituals. <laughs> singing Casual Negro spirituals, Negro spirituals in the background. <laughs> there was a lot going on then, so we just kind of wanted to revisit and give this a little more context and detail. We decided to switch it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Instead of Tracy going on Meld. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm kind of glad I don't have to yeah. do. Meld sounds awful. Um, Tracy is now going to be part of a new... I don't even know how to describe it. Do we call it a segment? Do we call it a (laughs) a game show? It's our modern day version of the... The dating game. The dating game. For the the babies listening. Me. (laughs) For heaven. (laughs) The dating game was a show where some lovely bachelorette would have to pick between three different bachelors. So we're going to ask you beautiful listeners... 
to recommend someone or recommend yourself for Tracy to go on a date with. Here are the rules. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Write this shit down. All right. What are the rules, Tracy? Do not be a serial killer. Okay. I will be so... If I get serial killed, do you know how <laughs> mad? <laughs> I'm coming back and I'm hiding everybody in the studio. <laughs> everybody. Okay, don't be what are the other serial rules? killer. Don't be <laughs> creepy in general. Do you have any real restrictions? These are actual <laughs> restrictions. Okay, like age or like other preferences. Okay, age, like 30 and up. Okay. I'm a grown ass woman. I need me a grown ass <laughs> man. Send your friends or yourself Wait, to... can I talk about my type? Oh, yeah, please. I ain't got no type. But you do. <laughs> you have several types. I do. So here's my thing. I like men who can put up with me. Okay. I'm a smart ass. If you are listening to the meet, podcast, gonna, you know what you're putting so up you with. So you should know. You should know. <laughs> if you can't take a couple jokes, then... Or that. serious conversations about or race. Or serious conversations about race and gender. <laughs> but physically, so I like either really tall, skinny boys. Mm-hmm. And my white boys, I enjoy them to have lots of tattoos. <laughs> preferably an ear gauge. Black boys, too. Okay. I guess. Okay. Um, preferences are flexible. Yeah. I like somebody who makes me feel small in some way, either height or width or wallet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that laugh. <laughs> All right, Tracy. All right. I see you. Oh, and if anybody, if it's important to anybody, I'm a Taurus. Okay. I like beards. If you have a mustache and no beard, do not apply. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? They look creepy as hell. Name one person who had a mustache and no I mean, beard. And you I mean, like, I agree. I think the number of people with mustaches versus the number of people who can rock a mustache. <laughs> that proportion is all off. <laughs> but you're going to discount them just on the mustache with no beard? If I say yes, I'm going to sound shallow. No. You can have real, like, yeah. I mean, I'm encouraging each and every person to, okay. if you're interested, if you, if have... you know somebody who would okay. be a good match. I mean, it's not like, I have dated men who are not my, like, prototypical. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, I mean, obviously... Okay, so you're yeah. open to I'm open all to whatever physical types, sure. all racial types. Yes. Okay. All personality types. No, <laughs> that's where I draw the line. I like somebody who is smart, mm-hmm. not necessarily. You know, I mean, you don't need a degree, but be able to have a conversation about things, stuff, current events. Yeah. You know, I do not get along well with conservatives typically. Okay. Or if you're conservative, like, keep it to yourself. Don't criticize <laughs> <What>? me <laughs> in my choices and decisions because mm. that won't go well. Um, no homophobes, no misogynists, <laughs> no transphobics, no phobics in general. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if they're listening to this show, they're not. Yeah. Right. Any of those. Right. But I mean, if, if they're nominating somebody else who doesn't yeah, yeah, listen yeah. to this show. Okay. I, I, hear, I hear you. What else? No UK fans. No University of Kentucky fans. Oh, my I God. Not. <laughs> it's so arbitrary. I cannot. I will not. I refuse. Just don't bring it up. <laughs> no, just don't be it. <laughs> Anything else? I guess that's it. Just be like a decent person. Decent human oh, beings. No. That's all we ask. Yeah, that's it. That's all. Right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't mind having doors open for me. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But do not insist that I sit still until you open my door. Mm. We're not going to get along. Yeah, that's weird. I know. Okay, but that's it. All Simple, right. right? Yeah. Easy peasy. <laughs> so send us like... A little bit about yourself, enough for us to get a little bit of like in a picture. Oh yeah, a picture and a little bit about yourself to another round at or about the person that you're yeah. nominating yourself or your for friend. this honor. <laughs> yes, okay. for the honor of being bachelor number one for Tracy. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Send it all to another round at BuzzFeed.com. Also, let's note that this does not mean we'll go on an actual date. Like if I feel we'll just consider it. (laughs) Yeah, there's a potential. And by we, I mean Tracy. (laughs) There's a potential. And we might even have our gentlemen, gentlemen callers, (laughs) come on the show and we can interview them so that the listeners can decide. Yeah, I suddenly feel like this is an awful idea. (laughs) No, Tracy. Meanwhile, let's talk about what Heaven's doing. Heaven is starting profiles on (laughs) blackpeoplemeet.com. So we're going to be accepting applications for the next few weeks. <laughs> Bonus materials, 401k. Let me know if you have that. Uh, stock options. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> stock options go to the front of the line. <laughs> yeah. Immediately. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the next few weeks, email another round at BuzzFeed.com. So to find out how this is going to ruin our lives, you have to keep tuning in. Yeah. No serial killers. I can't even. It's our, really our no only criminal. requirement. <laughs> Set the bar low. Yes. Can't be disappointed. <laughs>
All right, everybody. We are thrilled to have in the stewed with us Mr. Jay Smooth, who is a video producer for Race Forward and also host of the longest running hip hop show in New York, The Underground Railroad on WBAI. He's also a video commentator at Fusion and he is a video blogger extraordinaire. I just learned <laughs> that the term vlogger is not something that people use anymore. Yeah, I feel like people really didn't use it that much to begin with. You know what? You might be right. But anyways, I'm welcome to Jay Smooth. Smooth. Jay Smooth. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm not judging anyone who self-identifies as a blogger. <laughs> you know, if it's that's... chill. It's chill. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about what you do and why. Well, I've been blessed, uh, thanks to my relationship with uh, hip-hop, to uh, have a public voice for a long time. I started working at WBAI when I was still in high school. Yeah. Um, got to do my own radio show, The Underground Railroad, when I was still a senior in high school. And uh, I had been a real introverted, isolated kid up until then. And that relationship with hip hop really gave me a sense of having a place in the world and a public voice. So I've been really blessed to be a part of hip hop culture. That's so dope. And use that public voice to speak on other issues I care about. Most recently with the video blogging I've been doing on uh, Ill Doctrine and more recently on Fusion. Trying to get my voice out there, be a part of the conversation on things I care about and sort of represent the hip hop sensibility I grew up with and apply it to other things going on in the world. The things you care about, what do you care about most in the world? What do I care about the most? I mean, I'm usually drawn to, uh, I'll be sitting at home either reading something online or watching something on TV and just the way that we're talking about an issue or the way we're treating each other just seems unjust to me. And when it, when it reaches the point that I'm uh, yelling at my screen <laughs> about how y- y'all are just not getting it, you're doing, no, this is, that's when I know I need to turn on the video camera and just crush that rage into a diamond and, uh, and put, put, put that rage diamond on the internet. As someone who self-identifies as black, but people aren't sure what to think when they look at me. Do you self-identify as a light bright? <laughs> Uh, that is our phrase. That's, that's that... my friend. That's our friend Adam Sir was there. Yes. Shout out to Adam. <laughs> Shout out to Adam, the national know. editor I, I, of BuzzFeed. I, I respect his <laughs> self identification. I don't know if I can claim that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, that's growing up with people not being sure what to think when they look at me. It just gives me a lot of reason to think about race as a construct mm. and how weird and irrational it is, but what a real important presence is it is in our lives as a construct. So. It was a natural fit the last couple of years to start working with Race Forward. Um, So this latest series of videos about systemic racism came out of that partnership. So the series is basically a few like short PSA style. Like very short, like 30 seconds to a minute. Talking about systemic racism. (laughs) I don't (laughs) know how. In a very patient way that I could never do. Yeah. But I don't know how you fit it all in. But you like it. It is a like high concentration of like useful information. Mm hmm. Um, We're going to play a little bit just to give you a sense of what it's like. This is the video you did about the wealth gap. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. So if you're like most Americans, you probably say to yourself all the time, systemic racism, is that really a thing? Did you know that in 2010, black Americans made up 13% of the population, but only had 2.7% of the country's wealth? That the median net worth for a white family was $134,000, but the median net worth for a Hispanic family was $14,000, and for black Americans it was $11,000. Know that the median wealth for a single white woman has been measured at $41,000, but for a Hispanic woman it was $140, and for a black woman $120. Did you know that? Do you know what that's called? That's called systemic racism. And yes, it's really a thing. There's a little NBC, uh, the more you know, know (laughs) with systemic racism. Yes, that's a thing. First of all, those numbers are shocking. Those numbers are amazing. That's unreal. And I I spent a lot of time double, triple checking Mm. each one of these stats because you know people are going to go at you. Yeah. Uh I felt like since these stats are all so depressing and most Americans never want to talk about racism, I wanted to see what would happen if I was just inexplicably upbeat and happy. <laughs> yeah, the tone of all of these is we very like... like yes. <laughs> I love that I'm you just start your neighbor. Every... What's up? How's right. it going, America? I was try- <laughs> trying to sort of, sort of a mix of the more you know and Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask okay. about that. You talk about systemic racism all the time, right? <laughs> just like me. So who are you imagining these videos are for? I mean, I try not to focus too much on that because then I'll, I'll never get the idea done. But I definitely hope to speak to people outside of our usual bubble 
of sort of uh, social justice warriors, as they say. Oh God! Um, so I tried to I tried <laughs> yeah. to keep the jargon to a minimum and just strictly deliver the facts in mm-hmm. a straightforward way. It was a lot of fun being out in the street blurting out systemic racism really loud <laughs> while people walk by in the financial That was my, one of my favorite parts is like watching people's reactions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was one woman who turned around and was kind of offended at one point. Yeah. Like, same, wow. ma'am, same. I'm offended about systemic racism. <laughs> So I feel comfortable in saying that it feels like this video series is aimed at white people because honestly, people who don't who are not oppressed by the things you're talking about in these videos tend to not think about it very much. Generally, I'm generalizing. And this is coming directly from my experiences at a really white college, which I mentioned a lot on the show, (laughs) where we tried and tried and tried to have these conversations. But the only people who would turn out were black people. You know, the people who needed to hear this stuff were were never in attendance. So do you feel like these videos are reaching the folks who could benefit from them the most? I mean, it's always difficult to judge that. I mean, I'm always hoping to communicate in a way that'll be clear and straightforward and people will be, people will be open to hearing it. Things like this can still be useful, even if you're not sparking epiphanies in people who don't get it. I mean, just the support system of giving like-minded people some more artillery to send out there. If you're in mm-hmm. a debate on your Facebook page about <laughs> systemic yeah, racism. Yeah, I don't want to have a conversation. Let's, I'm going to give you, you can, a link. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. You can just plug this in here. Yes. Are the facts. Like, I feel like we can support each other that yes. way, even if we're not uh, getting the mind meld going with obtuse white <laughs> right, people. Right, right. <laughs> And to that end, like something that we talk about a lot on the show is like self-care in the face of doing what you do, basically. It's like feeling like... Yeah, this feels exhausting. And I'm not even doing it. Like the idea that like we have to teach people who don't understand these things. We have to teach. We always have to explain. And like it's a burden that we sometimes feel like we can't get away from. Yeah. And it's always a delicate balance because I don't want to coddle people so much that I'm not giving real talk about the issue yeah. mm-hmm. but I always I want to be fair to whoever I'm criticizing and treat them like they're a human being my objective is to communicate I think a lot a lot of our interaction online our objective is basically the catharsis of telling somebody off mm-hmm. which I think is valid yeah, not there, yeah. There's, real. <laughs> there's a place for that it can yeah. definitely be therapeutic <laughs> yeah and you, and you need to set boundaries sometimes to let people know like, I, I don't care if you understand why but you can't Talk to me like that. Uh-huh. Like that's that's necessary. I'm not I'm not saying we should never be on that level, but right. I think it can be easy to sort of let that become your default mode of engagement in every interaction, even mm. though it might not always be the most productive way for us to talk about this issue. So I'm looking for spaces where I can try and find a common ground engagement and, and prioritize finding some way to communicate and get people to listen while still being real about the topic. So that's that's always my goal making these videos. I think there's a lot more media thinking and writing about race now than we ever had. Like the whole blogosphere was in response to the lack of conversation. Have you noticed any changes in the way we talk about race or the kinds of emotions or the things that people are sharing? That's a good question. I mean, I think um, our ability to collectively push back with our internet social media voices mm-hmm. has been one of the most positive things. Yeah, the that's clapback happened. is real. <laughs> right. And I mean, we've sort of reached the stage of fear and loathing of the clapback where yeah, true. Uh, there's all this sort of panic especially from the old guard who mm. are, are accustomed to there are a few public voices who have no accountability and they can say whatever they want about us and we just have to take it yeah you know the landscape has changed and now we can push back and there's a lot of freaking out about uh social justice <laughs> quote unquote <laughs> lynch mobs outrage cycles outrage yeah. culture the toxicity <laughs> of, of twitter hashtag yeah culture. and look we're still in the early stages of figuring out how to mm-hmm. use these tools i think people go overboard sometimes i think there's some bad habits that are developed here and there but i think there's way more positive than negative yes i agree for us being able to clap back and have accountability yeah. and a yes. broader dialogue. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, us figuring out how to continue honing these tools and them getting used to us being here mm. and having a microphone. Yeah. What is the response to your outspokenness on racism in these videos been? Because I'm very familiar with what it's like to be a black woman doing this sort of stuff, the delightful rape threats and et cetera, et cetera. So what has the response been like for you? I mean, I think I'm definitely shielded from the harshest trolling and mm. abuse and so on by being a uh, you know, cisgender male on camera. I mean, in general, you know, I've been making videos for about eight years now, and I've definitely seen how much easier it is for me to talk about anything and just have an interaction with the things I said 
where if I was a woman saying the exact same things, mm-hmm. there would be some kind of comments about my appearance and so on, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That being said, there definitely still is a lot of hate, um, especially this one has sort of uh, propagated beyond our usual uh, progressive circles and brought in a lot of uh, people uh, offended that we are insisting racism is still a thing. <laughs> um, telling how us dare how, you? Well, how yeah, asking us, you? well, how... Well, okay, you have all these statistics, but maybe that's because of absentee fathers. Oh. You don't know that that's Yeah, that's why racism. I'm making less money than, <laughs> than white men do. There's always going to be a certain amount of hostility, but I feel like if your worldview is in opposition to mine and you're freaked out by what I'm saying, that means I'm doing what I need to do. I guess mm-hmm. if, if you're hoping for everyone to like you when you speak out on issues, like you're probably not going to be saying what you need to say so i mean i think that's not to excuse the ridiculous over-the-top abuse and harassment Mm -hmm. that people get but i think if you can figure out where your boundaries are and sort of uh, you know there's a saying never look at the comments i feel like when you feel up to it and you know in terms of self-care when you can look i think it's good to see the response yeah totally Mm -hmm. if you have haters then you know you're doing something right oh real that is actually real i think that's in the bible (laughs) (laughs) copyright jesus you know (laughs) some people have haters because they're terrible but (laughs) this is true also they use that logic too much (laughs) yeah so i feel like we cannot wrap this up without talking about the Chris Hayes thing. I feel like you're probably tired of talking about the Chris Hayes thing for that. I apologize. Tracy, what is the Chris Hayes thing? Okay, so the Chris Hayes thing. um, Some time ago, you were on the Chris Hayes show. Speaking of Chris Hayes, we are big fans. You should probably come and say hello at some point. (laughs) But you were on Chris Hayes talking with Nancy Giles. And this was a conversation about the Starbucks. The Starbucks Race Forward campaign, which can't imagine why that didn't work. No idea. (laughs) And at some point during the interview, it was made very, very plain that she thought you were, if not white, at least not black. And she tried to call you on, like, appropriating black mannerisms and, like, the way that you talk and the the language that you use. The whole time, Chris is just giggling like a schoolgirl, like, <laughs> he knows. oh, shit, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. He knew. He knew. <laughs> and it, it, you have to be like, well, this I'm actually black. Hello. We can play a little bit of a clip of it. Yes. I can't. I can't not tease uh, Jay about the kind of like brother way he was taught to talk, and you know, like hey, with the rap music in the background and like oh, down a, with the I'm, people. I'm a rap guy. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's kind of it's another interesting, funny thing about race. Like there would be some people that feel that you co-opted something like that, and other people might feel like, well, that's his background, and that's really cool too. Yeah, why These are you conversations Jay? Too. Yo, like you know, yeah, if somebody takes my wallet, I mean, it's really interesting since it's you also talking interesting that way because to me. I'm actually black, but you assumed that. <laughs> Was. And this is the sort of awkwardness see, we can look forward see. to in Star Wars. <laughs> Something that I find that we get a lot are emails from people who are just like, oh man, this happens to me too. And I'm glad that you're talking about that. Did mm. you get a lot of those responses from people who are like fellow light brights? <laughs> I definitely heard from a lot of fellow light brights uh, <laughs> saying that, man, that's happened to me so many times. It felt so good to see someone up there representing and handling it. Uh-huh. And I have to say that people guess wrong about my background often for it to be that weird antagonistic vibe is pretty pretty unusual Mm. the thing about it for me wasn't just that she wasn't sure or she guessed wrong but she was sort of wielding it as a cudgel against me and kind of using it to discredit me and score points against me yeah that that was the part that i i felt like fam why you doing this why is this happening literally why is this an unfair position to put me in Uh and i tried to I tried to give her an out. I tried to say, hey, well, hey, I'm a rap guy. And then she just kept going and going. Hint, hint, hint. hint. But either way, I don't think she had any ill intentions. I think she was just kind of riffing, trying to make the segment flow. And it just didn't work out. Oh, man. I want to know what. So after that segment wrapped, what did Chris Hayes say or do? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, he, He said, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say she was totally cool afterwards. And in the moment after we finished, I was still caught up in my head on everything I wanted to say about yeah. Starbucks. Uh-huh. Mm. It wasn't it wasn't until I sat home and watched the clip back 
and I saw the way she was acting out her Im- imitation oh, yeah. of me Gosh, with all the sort cringe-worthy. of... There's a lot of physical stuff. Weird like, sort like of body 70s language. Sanford and Son gesticulating. <laughs> so, you know, that was actually kind of foul. Uh, so in the moment, yeah. I, we didn't really dwell on it that much, and I haven't had a chance to speak to her since then. Uh, I had a teacher when I was in grad school for two minutes. Um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on the show. I went to Temple for literally like two months <laughs> to study poetry. Don't judge me. It's a safe space. <laughs> And I was having a really hard time in the class because I was not the only black person, but I was like the only woke black person, if you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> Damn, but that's so real. <laughs> right. Like we would we would discuss a poem and like I'm used to talking about like what a poem means, you know, because I mean, typically that's how like black people use literature and poetry is like a form of expression and not so much about the structure of a poem and like iambic pentameter and, you know sing queens and quatrains and what the fuck ever you know so like i would be <laughs> bored in class and i met with my professor and i was like um so here here are my problems i was like i'm pretty sure that it's coming from like a cultural difference which is fine you know it's like you know i know that there are differences but i mean this is why i read and digest poetry this way while everybody else seems to do it this way in the next class she launches on this lecture about the different ways that black and white people read and write poetry right Hmm. so first i'm like bless her heart she's trying she's trying to make and carve out a space for me here but then she starts to do what nancy did and kind of like act out how black people read poetry with her entire body oh no listen we were reading like British poetry. Why are you doing rap hands right now? <laughs> There's no cause for this. And she was like, you know, when black people talk, the, they're very melodic and they talk like this. No, 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 no. And I was just like, "There's no reason for this to be happening." I say all that to say, God bless you. I know what it feels like. You handled it very, very gracefully. Kevin, you want to say what this segment is called? Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> that, that's great. You remember the finger guns this time. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't do it last it's, time. <laughs> it's very, very important to the pronunciation of the show of the segment. Question number one. How do you feel about squirrels? How do I feel about squirrels? I feel like they're getting a little too comfortable in yes. New York City. Excellent. I don't know if you Excellent ever go answer. to Madison Square Park. Yes. Right here. Don't because of the squirrels. <laughs> yeah. Something having Shake Shack in there is messed up the whole uh, ecosystem. They're like, hey, fam, let me get a fry. Yeah. <laughs> let me get a bite of that burger. Yeah. No, they, squirrel. They've, they've no. chased me down. See? The block. Too uh, comfortable. I didn't want to say it before, but this would have dictated how we feel about you for the rest of your life. But you did a good job. You, you did a great, are on the right side of history. A great job. What was your first pet and what was its name? My first pet that I had on my own uh, was a cat named Tricky, um, named after uh, Jerome's character from Under the Cherry Moon uh, for Prince Heads. Oh, it's a classic. It's a camp classic. Um, And Tricky died real young, sadly. Uh, But soon after that, I got my next cat, uh, Tika, who's named after Prince's sister, continuing the theme. Oh, And she's uh, she's 16 years old. She's the cat you see in the videos sometimes. Well, God bless Tika. Who is the most exciting rapper out right now, in your opinion? The most exciting, exciting. rapper out. I mean, Who are I guess. Who you like immediately excited to hear from? I mean, I guess I guess Kendrick's the obvious answer. Yeah. Um, his album. I mean, his album is so rich musically, and it's. I feel like it's like one of those Radiohead albums or something like that, where he's like, "I'm, I'm just gonna do what I want to do. I don't care if they are hits. Mm. You're gonna roll with me yeah. or you're not." And that's my favorite thing. Like, there's some songs I don't like, but it's. I don't like them because they're too weird or he tried something. <laughs> and I, I respect that. If I yeah, if it's yeah, not totally. working because you were too ambitious, I can still respect that. Mm, so I love, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think uh, Danny Brown is great. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does next. Um, I think Rhapsody stuff is really dope. Um, but there's, I mean, there's always so many voices out there. It's hard for me to answer that. Which of your parents are you most like? Mm, that's a good question. Uh... I mean, I think I have a lot of both. My mom, in some ways, is the opposite of me. I'm very uh, introverted and quiet, and my mother is the one who's always making friends with everybody <laughs> out in the street, makes friends with the cab driver, becomes best friends with the owners of every <laughs> restaurant we go to. Um, my dad is all. My dad was a poet when I was growing up, um, so I think we sort of have similar creative minds, and he was a little more withdrawn into himself but I, I mean I, I think there's a lot of both in there I grew up with hippie parents who were both really, <laughs> do you identify both, as a hippie they, uh, I, I'm I wouldn't say that but I definitely absorbed a lot of that just that sort of open-minded ethos about uh, engaging with a lot of different kinds of culture and uh, just 
connecting with human beings and having that compassion, finding that those ways you can make that human connection. Jay Smooth, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Yes, thank hey. you so much for having me Thanks here. Thank you for joining by. us. Go to raceforward.org. You can see the video series about systemic racism at raceforward.org. Um, and you can catch me at illdoctrine.com. You can look me up on the Fusion Network, WBAI. Just Google Jay Smooth and ignore the search results about the adult film actor. Oh, oh. so we're, we're going to Google this right now. <laughs> Damn, damn, not joking. <laughs> and where can people find you on Twitter? The letter J, J Smooth 995 And it's uh, the same thing on Facebook. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. I'm a big fan. Oh, Thank you. You are now one of our favorites. <laughs> not that you weren't before. <laughs> You're even favoriter now. Is it time for the joke? <laughs> oh, gosh. Tracy's joke time. <laughs> Why is it so sultry? <laughs> because <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so here's the thing. We got a tweet a while ago from somebody who was hoping that there they could find somebody who was wishing they could find a Christian version of another round. Oh, yeah, this is not gonna happen. Here. Damn, my bad, son. <laughs> but I figured the least I could do is kind of tell a Christian sort of joke. What? <laughs> I feel like that's not what they want. It's a good joke. <laughs> it's such a good joke. I feel you, but that's probably not what they want. <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying to right, well, to bridge these gaps here. You know, I want this to be a place for everyone to come. Okay. Yeah, I feel that. I feel um, that. So if you're just joining us, there's always a Bob and or a Jerome in my jokes. So this joke is about a hunter. The hunter's name is Jerome. <laughs> Jerome is... <laughs> Jerome is... Do you hunt in a forest? Hunting in a forest? I suppose. Where are there bears? Bears yes. are in like, okay, so Jerome yes. is hunting in the forest one day. Mm-hmm. He's alone. It's just him and his trusty dog, Bob. <laughs> so now there's a Bob and a Jerome. Okay. So Jerome and Bob are, are in the forest, and, and Jerome is all, you know, he's got on his um, camouflage, I guess. Sure, sure. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how people hunt. Anyway, he's been out there for hours, and he's seen nothing that he can go for, right? Mm-hmm. So he's walking, and he's walking, and he's walking. And eventually he sees a bear, huge, mountainous, grizzly bear. Dog is like, nah, dog (laughs) takes off running. So the dog. (laughs) Same, to be honest. (laughs) Bob is like, I know what this is. Mm. This is what we're not going to (laughs) do. We're not going to fight a bear today. Bob takes off running, so it's just Jerome. And as the dog takes off running, he like steps on a branch or something to make some noise. Mm. The bear turns around and he sees him. Bear's oh like, God. dinner time. Oh, no. Hell yeah. <laughs> bear takes off after Jerome, right? Jerome's like, oh, my God. Jerome takes off running. Mm-hmm. And he's running. The bear's running. Jerome eventually comes to a dead end. I don't know how you can have a dead end in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Conceptually, I'm not there, but, but okay. It's like a cave or something. He goes sure, into a cave. Sure. There you go. All right. Jerome runs into a cave. Obviously, he's not very smart because don't bears live in caves? <laughs> he probably ran in his bear's living don't room. Fact I don't check know. your own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. So he's in this cave. There's nowhere to turn. The mm-hmm. only way to go is towards the entrance and the bear is standing over him, hulking, starving, slobbering, like fangs are just like sharp. And Jerome's like, oh, my God, what do I do? He's like, I know. I need to pray. Jerome <laughs> clasps his hands together as the bear is approaching. And he says, dear God in heaven, please touch this bear's heart. Turn him into a Christian that I may the escape. The bear? Turn the bear into a Christian. That's what okay. he prays for. <laughs> Out of nowhere, there's a flash of light. The ground kind of quakes a little bit. And the bear is looking at Jerome. And Jerome's looking at the bear. <laughs> and the bear's looking at Jerome. Jerome's looking right back at the bear. <laughs> the bear falls to his knees. And he puts his paws together. And he closes his eyes and he says, Dear God, thank you so much for this meal in oh your name. <laughs> <laughs> That's your Christian, Christian joke. <laughs> Jerome had to be mad. <laughs> oh my God, Tracy, I can't with you. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, what's up? Who are you buying around for this week? Okay, it's around the time when people are talking about the song of the summer. Mm-hmm. And I think it's already clearly uh, Trap Queen. 1738. 
I'm like, hey, what's up, hello? Since your pretty ass, soon as you came in the door, I just wanna chill, got a sack for us to roll. Married to the money, introduced it to my. It's right, Fetty Wap, new dude, but like, <laughs> it's such a sweet song. <laughs> I think it's very clearly the song of the summer. It's huh. already charting in a way that suggests that. But it made me think about the song of the summer that I was petitioning for last year, <laughs> which was not the song of the summer, but I love anyway. A song called Lemonade by a one Danity Kin. That is your jam. <laughs> yeah. It is. Loving when I'm flexing up in my car. Door swing open for my passenger. So Danity Kane is that uh, girl group started by Diddy uh, making the band. Fell out the way apart. <laughs> and they like always are like in flux. And, like they're not yeah, a band anymore. No. They're always like one member's out, one member's in. But anyways, excellent song. Lemonade is a good song. Samples the grinding beat. The grinding beat is like the audio equivalent of the flames emoji. Mm. It is perhaps Mm -hmm. one of the greatest works of art of the 21st century. So already you're in with that. I'm already in. (laughs) And it's such a nice like riding in your car with your girls song and like (laughs) sipping lemonade. I love it. It's like summer to me. If I had a say in what the song of the summer was last year, this is what I would have chosen. I petitioned heavily for it, and it did not go well. Mm. <laughs> but I'm going to still petition for it because I love this song. <laughs> it has Tyga on it, which I'm not, you know, not that into. But it's an excellent song regardless. Okay. I feel that. So you're buying a shot for Danny Kane. Yes. And all their adjunct members. Yes. <laughs> all their can. adjunct members. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Okay, I am also buying a round for a musician. Mm-hmm. This particular musician <laughs> is apparently named Corn Beef Soup. Uh, Let what? me explain. <laughs> Let me explain. This is the name of his SoundCloud. Again. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you guys are as into Vine as Heaven and I are. We love, love Vine. Vine. And every year there are like songs that are like really, really big on Vine that people mm-hmm. are like incorporating into all the Vines that they make. Yeah. Um, a big thing is like trap remixes of cartoon themes. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like there's a really big one, uh, the Little Einstein's theme song. <laughs> like somebody put some bass yes, under that joint that and it goes, so, we're good on that trap. And I read, 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 it is great. <laughs> it's great. So there's another one that is not as big as the Little Einstein's mix, but it should be. Mm-hmm. It's a remix of the I'm the Map song from Dora the Explorer. What? <laughs> Listen. I tweet, I when I found this song, I tweeted about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I would tweet the lyrics. I don't think I've ever heard this. I tweet the lyrics all the time, but it's kind of annoying because the only lyrics are I'm the map. <laughs> I can get you there, I bet. I'm the map. And then, like, the bass line comes in, and it's just like, I'm dancing, but I'm confused. I don't know what to do. It is so good. Once again, this dude's name, for whatever reason, is Corn Beef Soup. All right. If you Google Corn Beef Soup, <laughs> shout out to Corn Beef and Soup. And I'm the map in SoundCloud, this song will come up. It is so good. And it goes through, like, two different movements. Like, first it's like trap, and then it's like house. So. You know, these SoundCloud so remixes good. are so popping. SoundCloud remixes are How amazing. How do you make a great song out of, like, six seconds? Who was watching Dora and was like, you know what? <laughs> you know what this needs? <laughs> a trap remix. You know what would be hot, though? <laughs> oh, I love my people. It's so good. So, corned beef soup, whoever you are, <laughs> around for you on me. And for the map, too. The map's probably, like, shout out to Dora. <laughs> shout out to Dora can't have a round, but one day, boo. I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. Map, 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 uh, 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 Okay, we're uh, done with uh, the, the uh, fire. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, we did it again. Hey. Hey. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Shout out to the Pod Squad, all of our producers. Pod Squad. That is Jenna Weiss Berman. Yay. Eleanor Kagan. Woo. And Julia Furlan. Ow, ow. Shout out to Paul Ruiz at Argo Studios for holding us down. Uh, and giving us extra tequila, even though we didn't need it. Horrible idea. <laughs> Sometimes Paul does not make great decisions. And where can people find you, Tracy? <laughs> people can find me on the internet. 
at on Twitter at Brokey McPoverty. And you can find me at Heaven Like the Place That Exists that I was named after that I don't believe in. Oh my god. And rant <laughs> <laughs> like the verb that people only use to describe Kanye when he speaks. <laughs> that was a lot. You just gave Heaven Rants. So <laughs> <laughs> Super huge shout outs to the inimitable. Is it how you say that? Inimitable. <laughs> I can't pronounce words. I can't. <laughs> is it? It's right. You got it. The inimitable <laughs> Jay Smooth for stopping by and talking race and things with us. Yes. Thanks to our fantastic musicians, Jean Gray, who is amazing. Follow her on Twitter at Jean Greasy. And to Don Will of the Almighty Rap Group, Tanya Morgan. Follow him at Don Will. That's D O N W I L L. Thanks to heaven. Thanks to the crazy. <laughs> also, call we'll your mom. Never get old. Your call mom. your mom. So take your meds. You. <laughs> Stay healthy. Eat yes. some fruit. Stay healthy so you can come back. Get some mangoes in your life. Ooh, mangoes. <laughs>anybody but i got excited and i I spilled my tequila it didn't get on anything but the but the thing i'm sorry i didn't i can't control myself it's fine it's fine everything's fine it's just there it's just a little bit i'm so sorry oh no oh my gosh paul damn it